So let's say you're trying to make a hexagon on some sort of like hard surface model sort of thing. I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're going to do is in your Gizmo 3D little crosshair dude thing, you're going to go to the cogwheel of the menu that pops up and you're going to select a cylinder 3D. Now I already have my settings already applied and we do get a hexagon here. But if you look at these little like knobby things, you can get different actions for your hexagon. So that's just making a tube. You can make it more of a cylinder. You can go ahead and add even more uh, subdivisions across different axes. But I'm going to use the red one here and get back to the six sides because it is a cylinder and a hexagon is technically a cylinder, but it has six sides to it. So just very gingerly. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. I just had it sweet amazing and I'm gonna get rid of the two bit and awesome now we have a hexagon now the reason why I'm putting this on this hard surface model here is because I want to go ahead and make like a little screen for this rocket launcher I'm working on so I'm gonna go to my gizmo again and then with the little shift button the shift modifier I'm going to rotate by 30 degrees and you hold the shift so you can get increments of five now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the plus minus button. This is the alt key and hit the rotate uh, pivot thing so we can get a perfectly aligned to the world object. And I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. The reason why I'm doing this for this little rocket launcher is I'm making a screen, but I kind of want it to match the shape of this kind of like armor that I have on the top of this little rocket launcher. So I'm going to align my view using the little dude in the top right hand corner to get my alignment to be exactly on the back. And with the cog wheel of the gizmo, I'm going to go to my extender option here. And the extender is one of my favorite things because we can go ahead and extend the width of our object and get this really cool looking like hexagon type shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Gizmo 3D, hit the cogwheel and go to the Gizmo 3D and then scale it down just a little bit and then bring it up. And then from here, what I wanna do is I wanna kinda like create a, an even gap along the armor versus this little like extra bit that I'm adding here. Now, you might ask, why don't you just go ahead and scale it? Well, we can see here is as we scale it, the, the skewing of the hexagon, we, we kind of lose that like nice hexagon shape and it looks more like points now. And if you're making like a, I don't know, like a bow and arrow or a double sided sword, sure you could do that, but we don't want that. So instead what I'm gonna do is with my alignment already set, go back to my 3D gizmo cog wheel, I'm gonna hit, the extender and we can go ahead and extend it now you will notice that it will cap out at a maximum value no matter how far you try and pull it so what you do is let's just undo that for now if you do get to a point with your extender where it does cap out you can instead go to the cog wheel hit the accept button then go to the cog wheel again and then add another extender and that will allow you to pull out the length even more without having to uh scale your objects i'm gonna go ahead and put that right about yeah i'd say that looks good and then from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my cog wheel hit the accept button little gizmo thing scale it in I'm gonna go to my side view and just make sure we can match how extruded this object is relative to my little rocket launcher. And like so. So we have a little extrusion of this shape on the outside of my my little dude here. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is as I see this on the on one side of my mesh, I'm gonna go to my subtool palette. I'm gonna go to my deformation tab. I'm gonna tap the different axes for the mirror property right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to Z. I'm gonna go select it again, turn off the X, hit mirror. So it's gonna disappear on this side. We have my little switch over there and I realize that it's gonna be an interesting little cut. We'll deal with that later. But what I do wanna do is mirror this to this side, so or to both sides. So I'm gonna go back to my subtool menu, go to geometry. I'm gonna go to modify topology. Where is it? 
I have my custom menu set, but for the tutorials, modify topology, set my Z, turn off the Y and turn off the X and mirror and weld. And now we should get this little screen on both sides. Now, I don't like exactly how that's going to be fitting there with this little extra piece, so we'll fix that in a little bit. But now we have this thing with an extender, and I'll probably do more for this block out stage for this little rocket launcher I was doing because I was playing Helldivers and I was having a lot of fun with it. And spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy. I'm inspired. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on uh, me doing an extender in ZBrush for iPad. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section. And final tip, one gram per pound of body weight. Make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.